and Chunky Chowder. When the frost is on the pumpkin and the fodder's in the shock. Yes, those are words from bygone days, and really, very few of our youngsters today have the excitement of picking their own pumpkin, except perhaps at the grocery store. So think of the thrill of acres and acres of pumpkins just out there for the picking. And of course, often the pickings are bigger than you can handle. But it's a sight to warm your heart. And of course, pumpkin can also warm your tummy, especially when it's turned into steaming hot chunky chowder. Here's what it takes to make this dish. A can of pumpkin, or you can use fresh cooked pumpkin if you like. A can of cream style corn, or if you have it, use home can corn. A fresh, medium sized green pepper. And an old fashioned onion, mainly for flavor. And then a protein rich food, milk. The non-fat dry milk goes well in this recipe and it helps keep the calorie count lower too. And then you need some margarine. And for seasoning, some salt and pepper. Now let's see how it's put together. Phyllis Olson, who's Extension Nutritionist, gives us step by step the way to do it. Measure off about three tablespoons of the margarine. Then melt this in a pan that's big enough to hold the entire batch of chowder. And that's at least a quart and a half. Then add two thirds of a cup of chopped onion. And a half cup full of chopped green pepper. Both of these are flavorful additions and better still, the green pepper adds to our store of vitamins A and C. Cook these slowly and then go to the pumpkin. Before you buy a can, take a look at the size. Some cans hold exactly what you need. And for this recipe, we need two cups, and that's what this can holds. So we can use the whole can, no leftovers. Next, the can of cream style corn. Like the pumpkin, this is a two cup can and that's just the amount we need. And if you're using home canned corn, a one pint jar would be just right too. The seasoning, just a half teaspoon of salt and a fourth teaspoon of pepper. Now, stir these ingredients together. And so far in here, we have margarine, onion, green pepper, pumpkin, corn, and the seasonings. And now let it cook for five to 10 minutes before adding the milk. And if you've used the home canned corn, be sure that you bring this mixture to a boil and let it cook for the full 10 minutes. Keep the heat setting on low all the while that it's cooking. Milk adds protein and calcium to this dish and to keep the calories lower, you can use either the liquid low-fat milk like this or the non-fat dry milk that we showed earlier. Either one will give you more for your money than whole milk. For instance, the non-fat dry milk costs only half as much as regular whole milk. It takes three cups of milk for this recipe and just stir it in slowly, stirring it into the hot mixture and keep stirring as you pour making the mixture smooth with no lumps. And then heat it back up, but don't let it boil now that the milk's in. And here it is, piping hot and creamy smooth. And with it, some crackers and cheese, an apple salad, and a simple dessert like oatmeal cookies. Yes, it's chunky chowder. And really the whole family will go for it. In fact, they may even head back to the pumpkin patch so that you can make another dish like this sometime. Chunky chowder. Want the recipe? Well, here it is, plus what you might fix with it, 
and what makes it so good for your family. To get it, drop a card to Food Fun, Iowa State University, Ames, Iowa. Ask for Chunky Chowder. Fun Cheesy Beef Burgers Air as Kid. Whether it's a fresh, cool day in the fall, a sleepy, just awake day in the spring, or a plain old hot day under a scorching summer sun, there's nothing like a backyard barbecue. And what's more natural on the outdoor grill than hamburgers? But better still than plain hamburgers are cheesy beef burgers. They're juicier, more nutritious, and make your meat go further, too. Cheesy beef burgers. So, how do you make them? Well, Phyllis Olson, who is Extension Nutritionist, says start with just plain ground beef. A pound's enough to make six or seven burgers, because we'll be adding some stretchers in this recipe. So, for the flavor, add one and a half tablespoons of chopped onion, a teaspoonful of salt, and a dash of pepper. Of course, that's probably no different than for regular hamburgers. But here we're gonna come in with the stretchers. The magic that turns these burgers into cheesy beef burgers. First, we'll have an egg. That adds more protein. A fourth cup of water to make this burger good and juicy. A third of a cup of non-fat dry milk crystals, more protein to help build muscles and keep kids growing. And finally, three-fourths of a cup of oatmeal. That's a half and a fourth. The quick cook kind works in better, but either the quick or old-fashioned style will do. Oatmeal does a lot, you know, to absorb the meat juices, keeping the burgers from drying out over the grill. And oatmeal adds its own style of protein, too. If you're making seven burgers from this and planning to use cheese in the middle of each one, you'll need to start out with twice as many patties as the final number of burgers that you end up with. So, for seven burgers, you'll need 14 patties about a fourth cup full in each one. Then it takes about a half cup of shredded processed cheese for six or seven patties. And keep the cheese when you put it on in the center of each of the patties, leaving the outer edge free. And then put it on only half of them. And flip the plain half onto the cheesy half and seal it real good around the edge. That's to keep the cheese inside away from the heat so that it won't leak out and stick to the grill. And there they are, ready to barbecue. Of course, if you don't have a grill, these cheesy beef burgers are just as at home in a skillet on top of a burner. And whether you barbecue them or pan broil them, you'll soon find out that they're real dollar stretchers. From just the burgers too, the plain burger on the left looks dry and the cheesy burger on the right has held its juices. Just compare the liquids that have cooked out of these two burgers. Very little from the cheesy beef burger and just look at the amount that's cooked out of the plain one. Like those cheesy beef burgers? Of course you will. And you'll like even better how they stretch your food dollar. Yes, man-sized burgers for everyone in the family, from dad right on down to the small fry. And it won't take more than one this size to fill them up. Not if it's a cheesy beef burger with all those extras in there. Cheesy beef burgers. If you'd like the recipe, 
It's yours for the asking, and once you get it, your family will be asking for more. More cheesy beef burgers, that is. Just send a card to Food Fun, Iowa State University, Ames, Iowa. Ask for the cheesy beef burger recipe. Want to know an easy way to make a nickel? By saving it, that's how, and here's one way to do it, a way that everyone in the family will like. Serve them pudding, made from a homemade mix instead of pudding made from a store-bought box mix. Or compared to a can of ready-to-eat pudding, you can save even more. Not just one nickel, but three. A whole 15 cents. And nutritious? Of course it is. Eating just one dish full of this pudding would be the same as drinking a whole glass of milk. And you can't say that for the other puddings. Phyllis Olson, who's Extension Nutritionist, shows how to make that mix, that homemade chocolate pudding mix. It takes a big bowl and a sieve or a sifter. Start with the milk first, four cups of the instant non-fat dry milk crystals, and then another one and three-fourths. All together, that'll make five and three-fourths cups. And then sugar, which is already measured here. One and three-fourths. Flour, one and a half cups. And watch to see that you get enriched flour when you're grocery shopping. It has nutrients that are lost when it's made, put right back in again. Now a cup of cocoa, giving it that delicious chocolatey flavor. And then the mixing begins. And stirring it through a sieve really helps. It breaks up those clumps of flour that could end up as lumps in your pudding if these dry ingredients were not well blended. You see, it takes on a totally different look as you stir and sift, about three times through before you store it away. Be sure that the storage container has a tight sealing lid of some sort, and since there's nothing here that will spoil, you can keep the food right in that jar on the cupboard shelf. No need to keep it cold, and of course it's a good idea to label it, just so that everybody will know what's in there. Now, you turn it into a dish of delicious creamy pudding, well, really, that's simple to do. Just dip out two cups of the chocolate pudding mix. And stir in two cups of water. That's real easy to remember. Two of the mix and two of the water. And pour it slowly and stir all the time to keep that mixture smooth. Then turn the heat on to a medium setting and put the pudding on to cook. A heavier saucepan is best to use so that it won't scorch as easily. Keep stirring all the time until it thickens and watch to see that it's coming to a boil. Take it off the heat then and add the flavorings. For this pudding, it's a teaspoon of vanilla, a tablespoon of margarine, and a dash of salt. Stirring these in after the pudding is cooked gives a richer flavor. Had they been put in earlier, some of their goodness would be lost, and now we pour it up, rich and chocolatey good, and made so easily from a mix, a homemade mix. And a good thing about this pudding is that it has more milk in it than most that you can buy. And you can add extra flavorings and flares with the toppings you choose, for instance. Try one with crushed peppermint candy, or crumbled cookies or graham crackers sprinkled on top, or top it with coconut, just as it comes from the package, 
or make a nutritious topping of oatmeal, brown sugar, and margarine, toasted first to make it crunchy. Or make a whipped topping with sweetened non-fat dry milk. It will add nutrients too. No, it needn't be the same old chocolate pudding. It can be a fancy dolled up pudding with just a little imagination. And every time you serve this pudding, you're saving money. You can't beat that for topping off a meal. Chocolate pudding mix. The recipe is, is yours for the asking. The mix is on the front side and how to make the pudding and toppings on the back side. To get it, just send a card to Food Fun, Iowa State University, Ames, Iowa. Ask for the pudding mix. Food Fun Soybeans. Soybeans. Our farmers have been raising them for years, but pretty much for the oil and for food for animals. While other countries have been using soybeans as human food. In China, for example, they've been eating soybeans for centuries. Of course, we've been eating soybeans too, but in rather hidden ways. Mostly as ingredients in products such as these. But only recently have soybeans appeared at the table in their natural form. Or dressed up for party fare with seasonings and spices added for flavor and fun. So look again at that bean from the rolling farmland. It's a good protein food, especially combined with animal or grain proteins. A half cup gives as much protein as three-fourths of a hamburger, or a couple of eggs, or a cup, and a third of milk. And calcium, while there's not a lot, there's some, about as much as in a fourth cup of milk or in three eggs, or about seven hamburgers. But there's really a good supply of iron in soybeans, the same as in a hamburger, or in a couple of eggs, or in a half cup of raisins, which are usually considered rich in iron. And to top it all off, soybeans are still one of the least costly foods to eat only about a fourth as much as the lower priced meats. Now to turn these traditional field beans into a dish that's tasty enough to come to the table. Phyllis Olson, extension nutritionist, says that's no problem. Treat them just like any other dried bean. Wash them well first, but do not use beans that have been treated with a fungicide or other chemical. Just plain, clean, dried soybeans. All soybeans need soaking before cooking. Soybeans, like any other bean, use a cup of the dried soybeans to three cups of water. Then to speed up soaking, heat the beans and let them boil for a couple of minutes. Then set them aside and let them soak for an hour before cooking. Now, a search for a recipe. Every cookbook has recipes calling for other dry beans, such as Great Northern or Navy beans. Well, just substitute soybeans in their place. It's as simple as that. Or perhaps you have a favorite recipe collection. Here's one to try from our file, smoky soybean dip. You start with the soaked beans. Add a teaspoon of salt for seasoning and a bit of fat to keep the beans from foaming out of the pan as they boil. Then you cook them right in the water they've been soaking in. The water contains B vitamins, and it goes back into the beans as they cook. Now the next step then is the mashing of the beans. So you start with a cup or an eight ounce can of tomato sauce. Then all of the cooked beans. This was just one cup of dried beans, but after soaking and cooking, they've increased to about three cups. The easiest way to mash these beans is with the blender, though you could use other ways. But don't expect them to be smooth. They don't cook up as soft as other dried beans. So they'll be slightly grainy, more like finely chopped beans. Now I add a cup of shredded processed cheese, two tablespoons of brown sugar, a 
teaspoon of garlic salt, a teaspoon of chili powder, and two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. That's one. And here's the second. And liquid smoke for a more interesting flavor. A half teaspoon of this is plenty. Now put this back over the heat just until the cheese melts, stirring all the time. And it's ready for dipping, either hot this way or later when it's cold and party time. So don't let the next soybean harvest go by without trying some smoky soybean dip. Remember, soybeans make good food for us humans, too. And here's one of those foods, smoky soybean dip. The recipe is yours just for the asking. Send a card to Food Fun, Iowa State University, Ames, Iowa. Ask for the soybean dip.